the standard is always continually going and reaching back forward and trying to bring yourself to that level where you can be your best. I will always remember the doctor coming in and saying, you know, you only have a 1% chance that you're ever gonna walk again. And I was like, well, you didn't say 0%. It's just about pushing myself to the next level, and I love that challenge. That's what living to a higher standard does. It shows people that you can be more than what you come from. I feel like I strive to not only be a better athlete, but a better person. I want to influence youth. I want to influence my possible future children. That's what living to a higher standard does, right? It, it shows people that you can be more than what you come from. I would say that I live my life to a higher standard because of my family influence. We we're always proud to be Jacobsons. Though we came from humble beginnings, I always wanted to strive above that. I always wanted to accomplish more. I feel like I strive to not only be a better athlete, but a better person. You have to be very introspective aware of where you're lacking and where you could grow more. And sometimes we have to learn lessons over and over before they really stick, but there's so much that life has to offer and achieving that higher standard is the cream on top. You never know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And that's when I decided that I was gonna give it a try. I think my story is similar to everybody's story because everyone has obstacles for sure. So I'm not alone with that. And I just had something I wanted to do. Unfortunately in life, a lot of times things don't go how we expect them to. For me, the biggest thing was shifting my perspective because what everyone perceives as a disadvantage can become your greatest weapon or your greatest blessing. And it's really all a matter of perspective. What do you do when you're not feeling your best? How much do you give and how do you push through all those days? And I think that the standard ultimately becomes what you hold yourself to. Some days I miss that mark, you know, and that's just how it is. But ultimately the standard is always continually going and, and reaching back forward and trying to bring yourself to that level where, where you can be your best. Cancer treatment isn't for wimps. You know, all the why and how, how come I got it. Then it kind of hit me. I said to myself, well, that's why I got it. Because I'm strong and I can get through this. You know, I've always been a hard worker to get through things. And that's what I did. I was able to run up until maybe the fourth chemo treatment. Fifth and sixth were getting harder. After that, I had a hard time even walking a mile or two. I live my life to a higher standard by working as hard as I can at anything I do. I'm a firm believer in fitness. I think it helps overcome obstacles and I use it in every aspect of my life. I will always remember the doctor coming in and saying, you know, you only have a 1% chance that you're ever going to walk again. And I was like, well, you didn't say 0%. So I had 1% that I'm going to continue to put everything into that to try to prove them wrong. That was a huge thing for me, and I kind of took that attitude ever since, you know, in every single aspect of life. I think what kept pushing me was my family and friends always being there early on, you know, my family still being there with me today. But then it really instilled this sense of, like, inner motivation, that inner drive. I think I live my life to a higher standard every day, you know, trying to show people that whether they're newly injured or whether they're dealing with some type of adversity, everyone's going through a challenge every day. And I think people can take what I've done for my story, apply it to their life, and kind of get through those challenges. Let's face it, this is Texas. It's extremely competitive. At Martin High School, we go above the standard. Quickly in the transition, let's go! In Texas, you have to be top-notch. You have to put in all your effort. You have to be up there. And I just find that it pushes me a little bit more. I just think that I have that uh, slight edge that some people don't have. Because we're expected to be leaders so much, that higher status it doesn't just come without a cost. Like, you know, we have to live up to that, of course. I maintain that standard personally by just being hard on my mistakes. Because they're going to come. They always do. You can have as much kind of
kind of athletic ability as anybody else in the world can, but unless you kind of put your own effort and determination behind it, it's not really going to get you anywhere. My drive to just be the best at whatever I'm doing is what keeps me going. I believe the mental tenacity is about 70% of the process in getting ready for an elite event, making sure that I've reached my small goals every day leading up to the week goals, the month goals that eventually get to my end goal. Fitness in my life has always been about challenging myself to what limit can I get to next. What drives me to keep achieving at a high level is, I mean, myself, and then I ultimately don't want to let some people down, like my family or my coaches. I want to make them proud, and like I said, it's just about pushing myself to the next level, and I love that challenge. I love pushing myself and seeing what I'm capable of as an athlete. It was six years ago that some friends who run the obstacle course race for a homeless shelter, they knew I was interested, so they kind of kept on me, and so finally I said, okay, I'm gonna do it. So this is my fifth year running marathon. I have to get 10 in five years. I've lived the way I felt like I should. Everybody's different, everybody has different callings. I live in an intentional Christian community in Uptown, and when we first moved Uptown around 1980, it was a war zone. And there were a lot of homeless people, a lot of women with kids. And we had a big communal dining room. We just decided that we'd take down the tables every night and whoever needed a place to stay, we just had mattresses and we put them down. It wasn't an ideal situation, but I was always like, these people are choosing to come to this place. Eventually we purchased a building and now the shelter is a very productive place. I just want to keep up with running and the obstacle course races. If I have any little goal, I say a marathon when I'm 70. So we'll see. I believe dealing with adversity really shows you who you are. Because you can say this, you can say that, but until you've actually had to deal with that adversity, had your back against that wall, you really don't know who you are or what you're made of. I believe what I've done my entire life, my faith has been my stronghold, and I had to persevere through everything growing up in the type of environment that I grew in. I really didn't know what I wanted to do with my life, but I know I didn't want to turn out like some of my family members did, selling drugs, being in jail. After I got back from the military, I was homeless for almost two years. If I would not have found fitness, I don't know if I'd be here today. I live my life to a higher standard by being consistent and then staying committed. Being committed to me is, you know, doing it when you don't feel like doing it. Even though you may not feel like working out, you may not feel like getting up, going to work, but you still stay committed to it because you said you're going to do it. I live my life to a higher standard by challenging myself every single day and making sure that whenever I'm done with that day, I know that I gave my best. Fitness has played a massive role in my life. It gave me confidence, it gave me physical strength, it gave me friends, it gave me a community that people go through their entire lives trying to find. And just simply following something that I love gave me all of that. What drives me to compete is it's fun. You know, that challenge to actually see how close you can come to being what's considered great. If you can keep that fire burning as long as you can, let it burn. With starting Miley Fitness, I just wasn't ever happy with anybody else's standard that they put forth in their businesses. So I would always find myself at other gyms saying, why don't they do it this way? Why don't they do it that way? Then I started purchasing one piece at a time. My goal was to get one piece of hammer strength a month. Sometimes that was three pieces or four pieces, depending on the trip that I planned out pretty much. And just went to get it and built my arsenal, if you will. I put a pretty big parameter as far as the miles that I would drive. The furthest I went was all the way down to Florida. I went to Atlanta, Georgia. Probably made about 15 different trips to Chicago, Kansas City, St. Louis, Des Moines, Davenport, Nashville, Tennessee, and anywhere in between. I live my life to a higher standard by going to the gym every single day, taking care of myself, making sure that I get the proper meals and the nutrition's huge as well, but just taking positive steps forward each day to better yourself. I 
I don't fit the norm. I don't fit the standard. My whole life, being a fireman, especially a tiny female fireman, I've always had to hit that standard and sometimes try and keep going above it. If I ever fell low, I was always looked at as possibly weak, and so I kept on always pushing as hard as I could to make sure that I exceeded all the standards that I was required to do. I'm okay with not always being able to accomplish things, but if you put your mind to it and study and work hard, you can pretty much do anything you want.